On this week's KSP News Show, Squad reveal the all new landing gear, and they look awesome. New updated resources screenshots released, and 64 bit iteration of Kerbal Space Program to be removed in 1.0. All that and more on this week's KSP News Show. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jin Lee Kerman. Good morning, evening, and afternoon, my fellow Kerbonauts. My name is Jin Lee Kerman. Welcome back to the KSP News Show. Before we start off with this week's amazing stories, I just want to apologize for a couple of things. Firstly, sorry that there was no show last week. Um, I had an absolute, I had a, a load of schoolwork to do. Um, and on top of that, I was also working a lot, and so unfortunately I could, didn't find the time to actually make it. Also, there was not much news last week, and so what little news there was, I will be reporting on this week. And yeah, the other thing I wanted to apologise for is, perhaps if I sound a bit stuffy compared to usual, I do have a cold, and cold suck. Yeah, cold, cold suck. Should we get on with the stories? I think that's probably a good idea. So yeah, on to the first story for today. And so yes, let's get straight on with that. And that is the news that KSP 64-bit will be removed at the release of 1.0. This po- this article was posted on the Kerbal Space Program forums just the other day, and it says, Hi all, as many of you will most definitely know, Kerbal Space Program has a 64-bit Windows version available to players. We've offered this version for a number of past releases of KSP as of late, 0.25 and 0.90 in particular. It has become very apparent that this version has been consistently less stable than all the others. This level of instability means that the Windows 64-bit build falls far short of what we could consider a release-worthy product, and we will therefore not be releasing it for version 1.0 of Kerbal Space Program. We've spent a considerable amount of time investigating the reasons for these issues. The QA and experimental testing teams have assisted in this research, as have the community, something that we are all very grateful for. However, despite these efforts, and although we have identified a number of probable causes for the instability, there is a very hard limit on what can be done on our end. Most platform specific issues stem from the parts of the engine we have no direct access to, and we simply can't debug these problems in the same way we do with normal KSP bugs. We often can't even reproduce them in our own development environment, so we're limited to guessing at both the causes and the solutions. In short, there are no easy fixes we can do here, and we feel the time that we would be potentially wasting on attempting to increase the stability of the Windows 64-bit version of KSB would be far better spent on other improvements which would reach as many players as possible. We can all agree that there is no shortage of other things we could be working on. We're not giving up on the Windows 64-bit version for Windows though. The the most we can do at the moment, however, is continue testing the Windows 64 bit at each new version of Unity, and release it if viable. Additionally, we must take this opportunity to stress that Unity 5, while a definite leap in capabilities, performance and development power of the engine, is not going to inherently be a cure-all for issues, particularly in the matter of instability for the Windows 64 bit build. We are aware that some of you have come to embrace the Windows 64-bit version by this point, and that our decision to discontinue development for this particular build may be an inconvenience to some, but we trust everyone will understand the necessity that prompted the decision. At any rate, we want to thank everyone for their efforts in assisting all bug-finding and bug-fixing efforts for KSP, as well as the modding community for all their efforts in dealing with a rather unstable platform. We hope you're all looking forward to 1.0. We'll be sharing more news with you as development continues. Now, believe it or not, in the very first KSP News show that I did way back when, I'm guessing back in late May, I think it was, um, I was reported on the 64-bit version being released, and I thought it was going to be amazing because it means that Kerbal Space Program would have run so much easier on a lot of low-end systems because it's utilizing more of the RAM. 
However, as it does outline in this article, and I'm sure a lot of you Kerbal Space Program players out there have realised, the 64-bit version of the game is very unstable. You can have random bugs, like... I have one where my VAB UI is just completely... It, it doesn't look right. And it's all in random parts just strewn across the screen and it, it, it's a mess all in all. So I think overall the decision to remove it and work on it once the full version of KSP is out. I think that's probably a wise decision on squ Squad's part because I already think that the releases, um, particularly the jump from 0.90 beta to uh, straight to 1.0, I do think that it is a kind of a rush. And I think to add this in, add to add additional development time in with this 64-bit um, version, I really do think that it would have been rushed and it means that the update would have been rushed, which means the game would have been clunky and everything would have been pretty bad. So I think this is a good decision on Squad's part. But I want to let I want to know what you guys think. Would would you perhaps people who play with mods a lot? Do you think that this is perhaps a bad idea because it means that you won't be able to run all of your awesome mods like KW Rocketry, B9, etc., with all visual enhancement mods in all at once? Um, because you're not using enough RAM and you're going to suffer from crashes until the stable version of 64-bit eventually releases. Um, or are you like me and started playing vanilla a bit more and um, you're going to embrace the new fairings from that. And you're just, are you not too bothered about 64-bit being re removed? Are you glad? Let me know in the comments down below because I am really interested to know. Moving on to our next story for today though, and it is about the updated resources system. As you can probably remember from a few weeks ago, I posted the first ever screenshot of the work in progress resources system. And it featured a small probe with a rather large, I don't know, radar dish on the front of it and a very red moon because the red was where the resources were. Now, however, Squad have refined the system, and as you can see with the screenshot on screen right now, it, it has been refined quite substantially. You can see individual pixels in different craters on the moon. Um, I think I'm guessing that red means that there is a more saturation of the resource in that particular area when compared to say, I don't know, the green areas or the orange areas where there perhaps is less of a concentration of that said, so, um, said resource. And I think that this is a much better system. The fact that they are now individual dots um, rather than just a solid colour, I think it makes it a lot more easy to determine where the, exactly the resources are on that said planet. And I, I think this is a really nice addition because I genuinely can't wait for resources. I think I've made it clear in past videos before that resources are definitely my favourite feature of the new 1.0 update that is upcoming. Um, but I want to know what you guys think of it. Again, I want to know what you guys think of the new resources. Personally, I feel that it's amazing because moving into different orbits, it's very similar to the Keythane mod, but it's a more simplified version of the Keythane or Carbonite mod. And I think that this personally is amazing because it's it's passive feature because if you want to bring the fuel with you for a long trip and not bother with this mining facility, then you can. There is nothing stopping you. However, if you're perhaps a more experienced player and you want to use and utilize this resources system, you can spend the extra funds, take the extra time to scan the planets in advance or the moon or wherever you're going, you can take the time to scan your destination and find um, places to mine these resources so that you can pick them up and hopefully have an easier time on your mission. And giving that option of gameplay I think really helps to, um, to make KSP a more accessible game for people to play. But like I say, I want to know what you guys think of this new resources system. What you think of the screenshots? Are you liking the way it looks? Would you perhaps like to see some more UI tweaks for it? Let me know in the comments down below. As before, as I said before, I am very interested to know. Coming on to our final new news story for today though, and that is about the new landing gear for Kerbal Space Program 1.0, should I say. Um, the new landing gear, the actual GIF of them opening and the actual look of them and their current state has been revealed by Kerbal Space Program and Porkjet just today. You can see on screen now the finished look, the um, the folded out version of the of the new landing gear. And personally, as they're designed to be heavy duty, I think that these look rather nice. Um, in case you haven't seen the animation of them opening, I shall leave a link to the GIF down below because unfortunately I can't crop the footage enough 
um, to actually show you here without it appearing just completely muddy and horrible and you won't be able to tell properly so I'll leave a link to the full thing down below but for now you've just got this picture to look here as it, it you as you can probably tell it is only a very brief render you can still see the directional markers on the actual gif itself this was released by Porkjet on the forums but I do have to say I think they look rather nice obviously it doesn't give you a sense of scale with them yet I mean for all we know they could be the same size as the current landing gear within the game but somehow I think that that's probably not going to be because these landing gear are designed to be the larger variant of the ones we have at the moment or so I am led to believe and so I'm guessing that they're going to be maybe twice as large for more two and a half to three meter parts um, but again we can't be sure at the moment we cannot be sure with the the images that we have at the moment of the scale that these things will have but I'm guessing that they are definitely going to be larger than the current landing gear so yeah I want to know your feedback on this again let me know in the comments do you think that they're going to be large do you reckon they're going to be small landing gear do you like the animation do tell me in the comments down below but aside from that that is going to wrap up this week's KSB news show I'm sorry it's been a rather long one we've been talking a lot about nothing um, because we've had very little to go on this week with regards to a lot of the stories um, but like I say as I said reach the stories let me know your opinions on them down below because your opinion can shape how KS KSP shapes up to be a game and your feedback with it going into 1.0 matters more than ever at the moment and hopefully squad sees the video these this video and looks in the comments section and can see the, the ideas that you guys put down and will we'll hopefully do their best to um, answer the community because I know that squad um, love listening to the community feedback and all that sort of stuff because that's what Kerbal Space Program is built on. But yeah guys, I'd just like to apologise again, sorry that there was no episode last week, like I said, I was extremely busy, and hopefully I will get the time to make another episode, hopefully next weekend. So yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap up for this show, my name is Jin Lee Kerman, and as always, stay classy.